Chemicals and chemical processes form a major part of our lives. From the cars we drive, to the foods we eat, to the ways in which we relax, we depend on a vast array of chemicals to make life easier, safer, and more convenient. Chances are, your work brings you in contact with chemicals and chemical processes. Even the simple act of putting gasoline in your vehicle means transferring a highly flammable liquid from one container to another. And while the final product provides enormous benefits, chemicals may be dangerous or even deadly. Corrosives, for example, are often used in the manufacture of life-saving pharmaceuticals. These same chemicals, however, can cause serious skin damage, blindness, and even death. As dangerous as some of these chemicals are, you can handle them safely by knowing what you're working with, how to handle it, and what to do in an emergency. This program shows how to identify certain chemical hazards, handle chemicals safely, and how you should handle emergencies involving these chemicals. You can identify a chemical's potential hazards in several different ways, including the type of hazards it presents, its physical state, and health effects. Chemicals can present four basic types of hazards in the workplace. They can be fire hazards, igniting and burning easily. They can be toxic or poisonous if swallowed, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin. They can burn skin on contact and they can react dangerously when they come in contact with other materials. Hazardous chemicals can be solids, such as sodium metal, liquids like gasoline, or gases like chlorine. The effect a chemical has on your body can be either acute or chronic, depending on the type, frequency, and length of your exposure. Acute effects usually occur rapidly as the result of short-term exposure and typically do not last a long time. Chronic effects develop over time, sometimes showing up many years after the exposure. They are usually the result of repeated or long-term exposure. Benzene, for example, occurs naturally in crude oil and natural gas. It is commonly used as a solvent or raw material in the manufacture of a number of products. The short-term or acute effects of benzene exposure include severe skin irritation, a painful burning sensation, and a condition known as chemical pneumonia. In this condition, benzene is absorbed rapidly through the skin, causing your lungs to swell. Exposure to low concentrations of benzene over a long period of time can produce chronic effects including blood disease, chromosome damage, and low birth weight in babies. When handling chemicals, knowledge is your most powerful tool. Begin by recognizing the specific hazard or hazards the chemical may present. The Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, is one of your best sources for information on the chemicals you use. It contains a summary of a chemical's hazards, as well as proper handling, use, and storage methods. The MSDS also lists important information for protecting you, such as permissible exposure limits, the right personal protective equipment, firefighting techniques, and emergency procedures. The first step in identifying a chemical is to read the label. Each chemical that arrives in your facility must have accurate labels containing specific information. Read the label to discover a chemical's hazardous ingredients, the principal hazard it poses, and the name and address of the manufacturer, who can provide further information. In addition, the label provides the Chemical Abstract Service, or CAS, number. Use this number when looking up information about the chemical on a computer, or when there is a question about the identity of the chemical. It may also be necessary when reordering the chemical. In addition to identifying labels, each chemical container must have a hazard label. 
There are two major labeling systems in use for identifying a chemical's hazards. One developed by the U.S. Department of Transportation, or DOT, and one by the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA. The DOT system uses diamond-shaped color labels and placards that describe the nature of the chemical hazard. Examples of DOT labels include both flammable and non-flammable gases, flammable liquids and solids, poisons and infectious substances, as well as radioactive materials and miscellaneous hazardous materials. The NFPA label is also diamond-shaped, but is divided into four different colored sections. The red section represents the material's level of flammability. The blue section represents the chemical's health hazards. The yellow section represents the chemical's instability. And the white section indicates special hazards that cause the chemical to become dangerous in a fire, such as reactivity with water or oxidizers that cause fires to burn violently. For each of the primary colors, a number system on a scale of zero through four is used to describe the intensity of the hazard. For example, when you see a zero in the red flammability section, it means the chemical is non-flammable. However, the number four in the same section means the chemical is highly flammable. Chemical manufacturers or suppliers may have their own customized hazard identification, so you need to become familiar with the system in your workplace. Also, keep in mind that while some chemicals present multiple hazards, the label may only indicate the most prevalent hazard, so stay informed and take time to learn all hazards of the chemicals you use. You can reduce the risks of hazardous chemicals by using proper handling and storage techniques. While specific requirements vary from one chemical to another, here are some general guidelines that apply to most hazardous materials. Before you use any chemical, make sure you know what it is. Do not use any chemical from an unidentified container. When transferring chemicals, use the proper container for each material. Remember that the container you are transferring the material to must also be properly labeled. Make sure the container is leak-proof and sturdy. Stack containers carefully so they won't fall. Be sure they're not stacked too high, blocking aisles or obstructing emergency exits. Treat cylinders containing compressed gases as potential explosives. Don't expose cylinders to high temperatures. Excessive temperatures can trigger rupture prevention devices or cause explosions. When a cylinder is empty, promptly remove the regulator and replace it with a protective cap and mark the cylinder as empty. When moving or storing cylinders, secure them with straps or chains or place them in an appropriate stand to prevent them from falling. Never use a cylinder that cannot be identified. Flammable materials also require special precautions. Here are some rules for handling flammables. Carry glass bottles containing flammable liquids in a rubber cradle to reduce the risk of breakage. Keep ignition sources away from the material. Use static bonding and grounding procedures when transferring flammables. Keep flammables away from hot work or sparks. And observe no smoking regulations in areas where flammables are used or stored. Oxidizers and flammables are a dangerous combination. Store them well away from each other to prevent violent reactions in case of fire. Use NFPA-approved fireproof cabinets to store flammable materials away from the work area. Many accidents occur when chemicals are being moved to and from storage areas, so use common sense and the methods your facility has outlined when moving hazardous chemicals. When working with any hazardous chemical, keep the area well ventilated to prevent harmful vapors or dust from accumulating in the air. Hazardous chemicals have four ways of entering your body. They can be absorbed through your skin, inhaled as dust, 
fumes or vapors, ingested or swallowed, or introduced on contaminated objects that puncture your skin. To reduce the risk of exposure to hazardous chemicals, you must wear personal protective equipment, or PPE, that is designed and tested for the chemicals you're using. Some rubber gloves, for example, can fall apart when exposed to certain corrosives. Some chemicals require aprons or full body coverings to protect you from splashes or contamination. You may need an air purification device in areas where normal ventilation will not protect you from harmful vapors. These devices can range from simple air filters to respirators or even a self-contained breathing apparatus. In all cases, protect your eyes with safety glasses, safety goggles, or a face shield. Protect your hands with appropriate gloves. Neoprene gloves can protect you from most corrosives or solvents, but don't guess. Your life and health are at stake. Examine your gloves for signs of wear or failure every time you put them on. Gloves can fail due to permeation or a chemical seeping through glove material or penetration when a glove is torn or punctured. Look carefully at the tips of the fingers and between fingers for cracks, pinholes, or excessive wear. If there are any signs of damage, replace them. Make sure your gloves fit properly. Gloves that are too small can constrict the movement of your hands while gloves that are too large can get caught in machinery, causing major injuries. Before removing your gloves, take the time to rinse them with clean water to remove chemical residue. This will prevent your hands from coming in direct contact with chemicals. Your ordinary safety shoes may not protect you against all chemicals. Corrosives, for example. Wear rubber boots rubber overshoes, or synthetic rubber and acid-resistant work shoes to be safe. Check the MSDS to ensure you are using the correct combination of personal protective equipment for your situation. Your employer will provide the appropriate PPE, but it's up to you to use it properly. No one plans accidents, but you can make plans to handle them. Your facility's emergency action plan contains specific information for handling hazardous material emergencies, including contact information, evacuation and rescue procedures, and reporting guidelines. Learn the plan before you have to use it. Your knowledge could save lives and property if you apply it quickly and properly. In the case of spills or leaks, the HAZWAPR standard along with Title III of the Superfund Amendment Reauthorization Act, or SARA, may apply. HAZWAPR, or Hazardous Waste Operations and Emergency Response, establishes strict training level guidelines when a dangerous spill or leak threatens your workplace. In addition, SARA Title III states that any hazardous spill that releases more than the threshold limit of a contaminant into the environment must be reported immediately to local authorities or through approved notification methods. HAZWAPR also prohibits workers from participating in hazardous waste operations and emergency response activities unless they have received proper training according to worker protection standards. In other words, if there is an emergency, do what you're trained to do and stay out of everyone else's way. If you don't, you could make things worse and become a casualty yourself. If a fire occurs that is small enough to fight with a portable fire extinguisher, make sure you use the right extinguisher for the type of fire you're fighting and that you know how to use it properly. Remember the PASS system. Pull the pin, aim the nozzle, squeeze the handle, and sweep from side to side at the base of the flames. If the fire becomes too large, or you start to run out of extinguishing agent, evacuate the area immediately. Finally, when you're working with or near hazardous chemicals, 
Always make sure you know the location of eye wash stations, safety showers, and the number for the poison control center. If your eyes are splashed by chemicals, get to the eye wash fountain immediately. Hold your eyes open in the water and flush them continuously for 15 minutes. For larger splashes, get to the safety shower without delay. Step into the running water and remove contaminated clothing while in the shower. You have the power to make hazardous chemicals useful in many ways. You also have the power to use them safely by following some basic guidelines. Know what you're working with. Read the label and MSDS and make sure you understand the hazards and the ways to avoid them. Know how to move, transfer and store the material safely. Use the right PPE and use it the right way. Know your role in case of emergency. Know when and how to fight fires involving hazardous chemicals. Just as important, know when not to fight them and get help instead. Finally, learn the locations of safety equipment such as fire extinguishers, eye wash stations, and safety showers. Knowledge, your knowledge, is the key to keeping hazardous materials under control. You can make the difference and keep your workplace safe for you, your co-workers, and your community. <laughs>